Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is Madden 17 on EA Sports. This is a team that comes into the game wishing there was more on the line, but the reality is they're just playing out the string at this point. Still, despite their disappointing season, you can be sure they'll be giving it their all here. It's the Chargers going up against the Browns. So, with the call of this Week 16 matchup, let's hand it over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Just off the shores of Lake Erie, we are at First Energy Stadium in a city aptly named after its founder, Moses Cleveland, way back in 1796. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the San Diego Chargers and the Cleveland Browns. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. They'll come up now in the Wildcat package. Out of the Wildcat, a wide receiver carry. And oh, his first carry, he loses the football. But this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. Now I have to admit, partner, that I've often thought that I don't like this rule. Where the offensive player fumbles the ball, goes out of bounds, and they get to keep it. <laughs> that's just because you're a defensive guy. That's why you don't like it. Yeah, you're right. It is a slanted view, isn't it? But that's this is where, for the offensive team, the sideline is their friend. Usually it's not their friend. Right, yeah, go. exactly Come right. On, I actually it. played for a guy in college. You know what he used to name the sideline? Sammy. Sammy sideline and use him well. This is Crowell. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. The starters for the Cleveland Browns. And let's discuss the tight end, Gary Barnage. Sometimes he can get overlooked. I love how he emerged in 2015. We had a scouting report on him that said he was a good blocker, dependable receiver, but no stardom at all. Had a thousand yard season in 2015. No longer do we have those, those shackles on him at all. Gary Barnage can play. He finds Coleman. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And a nice gain of 21 yards. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. Garoppolo looking deep downfield into a double team and it's intercepted. A great read and it's picked off. And he's able to get it back to right around the 27. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. One receiver left, that's Allen. Brissett got a man over the middle. It's Williams. And he's brought down after a good game. A really good pickup of 28 yards. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. The starting lineup for the Chargers of San Diego. Who are we discussing out of this unit, Charles? A big guy out of Arkansas. Their tight end, a second-round pick, Hunter Henry. Many people had a first-round grade on him. Plays the best tight end coming out of the draft. Has the ability to get down the middle of the field, get into the seams, and knows how to find dead space against the defense and create plays. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. 
It's really simple to say that they know their identity, that they are a passing team. But one of the reasons that they're so successful, they know how to mix in the run and make sure that they keep the defense off balance and not able to just simply say, let's go get the quarterback and disrupt things. Here's Brissett. On the left side, this is Stills. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. And here's the starting crew defensively for Cleveland. Joe Hayden is a complete cornerback. He tackles, he covers, and does everything with incredible speed. They'll run it now, out of the gun. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Well, the person carrying the ball is always the easy target when things aren't going so well. But I think it's a combination with the Chargers. They've got to get the offensive line going in order to improve those numbers from last year. They weren't very good running it, partner. No, they were bottom of the AFC, second to land. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Troy Beerman in there to drop it for a loss of 10, and it'll be fourth and long. Here's Drew Kayser now as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 or maybe the 17-yard line. Well, pretty woeful there, just 23 yards on the punt. And the Browns will take over first and 10. Shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 30. 12 yards there as they move the chains. That was a nice completion on an out route. And those types of plays are the result of arm strength by the quarterback and timing by the receiver. Now let's go. Green 39. Green 39. Well, now they'll try the end around. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. Second down following the run. Garoppolo now. And the connection made to Terrell Pryor. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Everything about that play was beautiful. A great corner route where the receiver worked the defensive back inside and then broke back to the outside to the corner. But how about the throw by the quarterback? Anticipation on the break from inside to outside. He threw the football. As the receiver turned around, the ball greeted him. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. And he motions the wide receiver. They'll look to throw here on first down. Over the middle, the catch by Coleman. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Ten-yard penalty there on first down, so now first and 20. After the penalty, it's Crowell. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Two yards on the pickup, it'll be second down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Out 
the gun. They'll look to throw. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. So holding by the offense and maybe now got to shift up what you want to do on the playbook. Yeah, definitely. Change what you're doing in the playbook, but boy, the advantage shifts to the guys on defense, doesn't it? Longer yardage situations, they often become bolder. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Garoppolo, and he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Denzel Perryman. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. And now San Diego getting set to go. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration or the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. One receiver left. That's Allen. Brissett. It's caught on the right side. Williams. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Give him eight on the play, and that'll lead here to a third down. Offense coming up, needing two yards on third down. Here's Brissett. He's got a man. It's Williams. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. So he makes the grab and the chains move forward. Nice job by the offensive line giving them time to complete that first down pass. So they're operating in the red zone. It's a five receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. He'll drop to throw. He's got it to Williams. And he takes it in for a charger touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Chargers have taken the lead. And the Chargers grab the 7 0 lead. the touchdown he'll kick this one away this is taken about seven yards deep and the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards all told as he's taken down back shy of the 20 and now cleveland geared up to take the field and following the interception just any interception are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no you just throw that out the window I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they hit. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six. And a Extra point. And it's good to make it 14 0. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. Gets it to Gordon. And he'll be out of bounds up 
past the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag. Because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. Now Griffin on first down. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by Melvin Ingram. And they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. So out come the Chargers. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right? To be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments. But if nowhere to go here, he lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Back to throw here. And stills over the middle. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and they're going to be staring at a third and long here. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Brissett. Flushed out right. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. I don't know how many times, not just in my playing career, but you and I working together, have we ever heard a coach say, you know, I just don't have that play on my call sheet. <laughs> and that's really what we had here. That was a big hole they were trying to get out of. Yeah, big gain. Still a ways to go, though. Here's Drew Kayser now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I'm here my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. They begin with a run by Crowell. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Steps away to his left. Gates has it over the middle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. These guys told us, these guys being the coaches, they wanted to really stretch the field, get the ball down deep. They were able to do that here. And you know when you stretch the field, you often leave guys in one-on-one -on -one situations. And that allows your better athletes to go up and get the football. I love the preparation that they put into this. They made it a priority, and they got what they expected. Give him six on the play, and it'll be a second down. It's a nice catch there by Gary Barnage, and there's no getting around it. The emergence of him has been nothing short of stunning, hasn't it? Yeah, first six years, total 44 catches. Then at age 30 last year, he goes for 79. Who says you don't get better with age? <laughs> and able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Four yards on the pickup, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Griffin now to throw on third down. And he finds Barnage. He's got it. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. Two 
They'll throw on first down with Griffin. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they'll get 17 yards there. And the Browns are going to have a first down. And they're going to speed things up here. From the red zone now, here's Griffin on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. A fake to Crowell. Now it's Griffin. Can't find anyone open. But when this ball's tipped and intercepted, a great read and it's picked off. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. And the Chargers coming out of the field now. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. Got it. And tough starting field position here. Now a handoff here to his running back. Oh, and he's not going to make it out of the end zone. The push too strong, and that'll be a safety. So this is where a defense can really pin back its ears, bring it all, sell out to stop the run. This time, it'll earn them two points. They definitely guessed right here. A run blitz all the way, and that's a bad feeling for a running back when he knows he's got to at least get it over the goal line. But all he sees are opposing jerseys. And now the Browns offense trots back onto the field. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Defense really showing respect to the deep ball here, playing off the receivers. Let's go! One, nine! They'll let their receiver run out of the wildcat. And he's going to be taken down here as that will lead us to the end of the first half of play. So we are at halftime here on Christmas Eve as we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry, so both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And in the end, the decision to bring it out costs him a few yards as he's out of bounds just past the 20. Out comes the Chargers as they'll go on offense now to start this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Carl Nassib, the rookie from Penn State, in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. to get this up over the 20 to the 21. Eight yards on the run there, and that trims it to a third and 11 coming up. And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. And it looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Here's Brissett. And that is incomplete. Keenan Allen, the intended target, and that'll bring up a fourth down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Take it in at the 22. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And out will come the offense as they take over. 
Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? And I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back from the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. See if they can get the latter 50%. A first down carry now for Crowell. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Six yards to go here on second down. Well, again, it's Crowell. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. So the D-line's going to spread out. They'll come out in the pistol. Now a play fake here on first down. Over the middle, the catch by Coleman. And he's brought down after a good gain. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him. It's and this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Corey Coleman hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Browns have cut it back within a score. And for Robert Griffin III, the first passing touchdown in a Browns uniform. Charles, so good to see him back out there, isn't it? And do you think that maybe it was almost like a cleansing touchdown for him? Oh, yeah. To try, uh, this is a brand new start in Cleveland. Now he has an opportunity to go back to being who he was as a great player coming out of Baylor, his rookie year in Washington. Can he recapture that magic? That first touchdown, that eases the way. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. And now San Diego getting set to go. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Second and five. Let's go! One, six, five, six, five, six, five, six. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Croy Beerman in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. And the defense will try and pin their ears back and get pressure again here after the sack. It's third down. Here we go. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. As tight ends go, he might not provide the super flashy plays very often, but he's pretty reliable. Usually an excellent target and normally catches what's thrown to him, but he didn't on that play. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. And here are the Browns now as the offense comes back out onto the field. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. 
Griffin now off the bootleg. And Barnage has it on the right side. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And that is going to set up a third and one. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Defense has to stand tall here, third and one. On third and one, Griffin finds his target. It's Gates. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. Do you get the sense, Brandon, that people are trying to retire Antonio Gates? They keep thinking this is almost the end of the line, and then he keeps making catches like the one we just saw there. He's the old reliable, you're right, just one of nine players in the NFL with 100 or more touchdowns. On first down, Griffin. The throw to the left side, caught by Coleman. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's the Browns with a deficit. They're trailing, but with the football here to start the fourth. And now a first down following that long game. Five wides in the game. Four of them to the right side. To throw is RG3. And nearly another interception. They've been around the ball all game. He's got to be kicking himself right there. His team's already picked off two passes. That would have been the third in the game. And boy, they've really played well attacking the football. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. On second down, here's Crowell. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. On third down, Griffin. He finds Coleman. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. Well, the advantage has certainly shifted to the defense as we began that third down play, and they found a way to foil it and pick up a first down. Third time's a charm, right? Two incompletions. Had to have it on third, and they got it. Yeah, they stuck with it, weren't daunted at all, and picked it up. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Now Griffin on second down. This will be caught at about the three. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. I'm going to show my age here a little bit. We used to talk about running backs catching the ball as safety valves. Nowadays, they're a big part of the passing offense. Quit acting like you're so old. You're only 65. Throwing again, Griffin. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Denzel Perryman. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And now San Diego getting set to go. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Give them five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Brissett. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Emmanuel Ogba, the rookie from Oklahoma State, in there to get him, and that's sack number eight for him on the year.
And with the play clock winding down, we're going to get a timeout. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Time is starting to run out, really becoming a factor. We'll see if the defense can get the stop they need to get the ball back to the offense. Here's Brissett. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns' defense has a touchdown. Now that was a beautiful play. A pick six. How would you punctuate something like that, partner? What do you mean with an exclamation mark? Exclamation mark, a big word. What would you do with the ampersand? I like it. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. Griffin will try and throw. And they get the football, but not much on the return here as he stopped at the seven-yard line. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Here comes the Chargers offense now back out onto the field. And let's see what the defensive coordinator may have up his sleeve here to try to get this final last stand and win this football game. He'll come out throwing here on first down. And Stills over the middle. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And, of course, the quarterback in this situation, he's realizing time is becoming a factor. Let's see if they can get some points on the board here late. They'll look to throw here on first down. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. One receiver left. That's Allen. They'll look to throw. He's got time in the pocket. And this is caught. First catch for Keenan Allen. And that right there will set him back a bit on the offensive holding penalty. And you know who you want to pressure after a penalty like that? The guy who just committed the foul. You want to see if he's going to keep his head down or if he's going to get his head right back into the game. I'd send a blitz at him right away and see if he holds up. Come on, let's go! Ohio! Ohio! Back to throw. It's caught. Stills right side. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. He's back to throw. And this complete to Henry over the middle. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Second down now after the pass completion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of one, and they're going to have a third down. And yet again, this run game just continues to be completely shut off. Completely stymied. I mean, they're trying to get some consistency, trying to find places to roam. They just haven't been there throughout this game. Let's go! He'll look to throw. Eluding the pressure right. 
And to the right side here is Allen. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. It'll be a two-yard gain, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And now the Browns are going to take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Let's go! Grand 38! Grand left round! Left round! Ohio! Ohio! Back to throw. And he finds Stills complete. And he gets this down to the 18, good enough for a first down. It'll be a 20-yard gain on the play. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Most like that in just about every position. And sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. They come out here in the eye. And they give this time to the tailback. And they'll get him down right around the 16. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. And he's not able to come through. This is no good. And that is how this game comes to a close. Well, Charles, coaches always talk after losses about putting that behind you and moving on. But in a case like this, when you could have won it with a chip shot field goal and you miss it, that is going to sting for a little while, isn't it? Some are tougher to put behind you than others, right? We always talk about compartmentalizing. What is the rule, Coach? It's always about 24-hour rule yeah. after a game, and, and then you go. move on. That's tough because that was a very makeable field goal. In fact, I think you and I were both just shocked that he didn't knock it through the post, and they end up walking off the field losers. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound as we say so long from Cleveland.